first of all, congratulations, guys. Uh, I'll start with Henrik. Just uh, your thoughts on getting to this day after, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure talking about this and discussing it for months and how excited you are to get underway with the job. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, just want to thank the Aquilini family and Jim for, for giving us this opportunity, first of all. Uh, and it, it's taken some time. I mean, we, we don't take this, uh, this lightly. Uh, we wanted to make sure that uh, uh, we came in in the right roles and, and uh, feeling that we can, that we can do our, our best job and, and trying to help. And Daniel, you guys are going to be involved in a lot of different areas of uh, the hockey operations side of the organization. Is there one area in particular that you're most excited about working in? Uh, I mean, we talked about this. We're coming in as rookies, uh, old rookies, but uh, we want to come in and learn uh, all aspects of, of uh, this side of the business. And uh, we're just excited to be back with the organization. We, we worked with so many great people throughout the years. Uh, great teammates, coaches, management. So we're excited to be back and uh, we're coming in with wide eyes and I want to learn. We'll go next to Ben Kuzma, Post Media. Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, congratulations. Uh, I have a, a question and a follow-up and uh, I'll get uh, Henrik to start because he wore the C and Daniel can follow up. My first question, uh, guys, is who did you reach out to when you were thinking about this process Obviously, you played with some prolific players here who moved on in hockey op roles, uh, Marcus and Nasan, obviously, with Moto and Trevor here. Uh, who did you reach out to for some advice? Uh, that's my first question. Yeah, well, like I said, we, we, we didn't take this, this lightly, and we, we want to come in and do a, a good job, the, the, best, uh, of our cap, uh, the best we can. Uh, so, of course, we talked to, to a lot of people, and... Uh, Trevor was one of them. Uh, Stan Smeal was was another guy, and and we talked to 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 more people than that. So uh, good discussions, and and uh, uh, we're we're excited to, to be back. Daniel, yeah, same here. Like okay. to, to to come into this role, I think you need uh, you need to know what it's all about, and and uh, we want to come in and and uh, uh, be able to do a good job and. Uh, I think this this timing is perfect for us. I think it, when we were done playing, I think we needed time to with our families and and uh, wind down and and do all all the other things uh, in life. And now we're ready to to come back and and uh, and work hard. My uh, follow up question here for both of you: um, There are star players who are currently in the NHL who have evolved into ho prime hockey op uh, situations: Sackick in Colorado, and Eisenman in Tampa, and in Detroit. Uh, is this very much a let's see how it goes, or is there an end game down the road here in long term involvement with the club? We we have no no game plan. We like I said, we come in and we we're gonna find a role that uh, where we can do the the best job we can, and and we'll see where it takes us. Uh, but we uh, right now we're we're happy with with this uh, this role and be able to help the team this way. And then uh, we'll, we'll like I said, we'll see we'll see where where it goes. Next is Ian McIntyre, Sportsnet. Good morning, fellas. Uh, I know you've missed uh, events like this. Um, can you tell me, Henrik, why you guys are doing this? Uh, I, I know you don't need any more fame or money. You have pretty nice lives. You each have you know, children who still need you very much. Why, why now? Why are you doing this? Well, there's uh, number number one, our, our, and our only answer is that we care about this team. That's uh, uh, and we've said after we, we were done playing that we this is a side of the the game where I think we we can help and and we've taken our time and uh, we we care a lot about this team. So to be able to come back and, and help uh, is uh, is a great feeling. Uh, hopefully, there's uh, or hopefully, but. Uh, we're not looking for for fame again. That's uh, uh, let's be clear with that. So we're, we're hoping to come in and do a good job and and uh, uh, try to stay in the background as, as much as possible. And uh, I'll ask you this one, uh, Danny. The team just had its most disappointing season probably since the 1990s for what was expected and and what occurred. And there were lots of reasons for that. But uh, this will be viewed as some as you know great optics for the Canucks how concerned or were you aware of the optics and 
how important was it to for you guys to make sure that you had something you felt was meaningful and not just something that was token no we like Hendrik said we, we care about this team uh care about the people that work here that's the number one reason uh the only reason we come in uh, uh we want to do a good job and uh, that's been our mindset from from the first day we came here 20 something years ago so we'll, we'll do the same in this role and and uh, we're looking forward to to seeing this out of the business. It's going to take a lot of learning, and uh, we're aware of that, but we're 100% uh, committed. We'll go to Jay Jan. We're Global BC. Hank, Danny, great to see you. Congratulations on the appointment. For the last 20 plus years, we've watched you guys on the ice, always in sync, always thinking the same way, always playing the same way. I'm wondering if that's going to apply to the way that you evaluate players the way you go, go about doing your job in the front office. Do you have a different opinion when you look at players and when you, and when you want to handle things? I'll start with you, Hank. Uh, I, I think we see hockey the same way uh, as you, you, you saw when we played. Uh, I think we, we have a good understanding of how, how, uh, uh, how you need to, to, be, to be successful in this league. Uh, we also have a, we've been in a, very, a, lot of, a lot of very good teams and, and uh, uh, I think we know what what those teams had uh, when you talk about culture and and uh, uh, and those things. So that that's I think we have the same opinion on on, on a lot of things. Uh, there's uh, there's parts aspects where we we might not agree, and that's I think that's what you need in a in a good organization is, is uh, a lot of discussion and uh, a lot of feedback from from different people. So uh, that's that's a good thing. Danny, when was the last time you didn't see uh, eye to eye with Henrik, either on the ice or or in a decision? I think uh, <clears throat> teammates playing with us and especially linemates. I think they've seen they've seen us uh, go back and forth quite a bit on the bench. Uh, I think we demand a lot from each other, and uh, sometimes you're going to have disagreements, but uh, for the most part, you have a discussion, and then you then you move on. So. Uh, like Henrik said, I think you need you need that discussion to happen, and then then you you'll get the best uh, you'll get the best results. We'll go next to Yanni Bengtsson with NHL.com Sweden. Hey, Gabor. How are you doing? Yeah, man. That was good. You were thinking to conclude a little bit in a connecting to the question uh, you had just just before this. Um, will you work together? I mean, uh, always together, like you play together, or will you work, you, Henrik, with, with one area and, and you, Daniel, with another area, or will you do everything together? Uh, I, I, well, I think in, in an organization, I think everyone works together. Uh, that doesn't matter if you're, if you're the GM or the owner or the, uh, uh, the players. You should all, all work together towards the same, same goal. So that's... Uh, uh, if that's uh, that doesn't mean we're going to watch every practice together or uh, do those things, but we 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 work together for sure. What I meant was more than than will you specialize in one area, Henrik, and, and you, Daniel, in, in another area? No, I think, you, um, yeah, I, I mean, I think that's uh, we kind of mentioned that before. We want to learn all parts of this business, so. Uh, we, we, I mean, we're we're gonna focus on 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 a lot of things and, and just try to, to to learn this side of the business. Are you lost for Sweden now? Will there never be a, uh, any Sedins in Sweden back in the, in the future? That's uh, uh, that's that's for the future. We'll uh, we'll we'll take we'll do this and then uh, it's 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 tough for us to plan for for what's gonna happen in the next the next couple of years. Next is Thomas Grants with The Athletic. Excuse me. In terms of, in terms of an overall overarching philosophy, uh, I know you've watched a ton of games since your retirement. What's your overall hockey philosophy that you bring to this on day one, even though, of course, you'll go through the motions of learning some of the intricacies of the business side? I think, that, like Henrik said before, I think we've been on, on successful teams. Uh, uh, we had some really good teams in this organization. I think uh, we know what those teams had. Uh, I think culture, uh, what you bring to the 
to practice every day, what you bring to games every day, how you come into training camp. Uh, those things all come come uh, in play to be a successful team. And I think uh, we've seen that firsthand with a lot of our, our teams. So uh, I think we, we can, it will be fun to, to be a part of this, this group and this team and, and, uh, and uh, see, see that they have the same things. And a question for Jim, if I could. Jim, in terms of what your club's looking at over the next two week, two and a half weeks, I guess, before a roster freeze, um, what, how do you expect the Twins to contribute in the immediate future, um, you know, as they are also getting their feet wet on the management side? Yeah, well, they're like, you know, when we started this process, um, they're going to be involved in all the different aspects of what we do. And that's from, you know, team building, talking about the types of players we want, what the team, what we want the team to look like. Um, you know, they'll be part of our post scouting meetings heading into the expansion draft here. Um, be part of our free agent meetings when we talk about free agents or adding players to our group. So they're going to be involved like they're, you know, they played on good teams. They understand what good teams look like. Um, they, they're passionate about wanting to do this. Um, and, you know, and so they're going to have a big voice in, in what we do here going forward. And, and, you know, I'm really looking forward to working with them. We'll take our next question from Jim Morris, Canadian Press. Congratulations, Henrik and Daniel. Um, maybe, Henrik, I know you've had this job for all of 24 hours now, but if you, looking at what do you see, uh, what do you think this team needs to rebuild? Is it one thing? Is it many things? Is it, in your mind right now, and I know you haven't had a lot of time, and I know you say you want to learn, but what do you see the first thing that leaps out to you? Uh, well, like I said, we're, 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 we've been on good teams. Uh, I think number one, to create uh, a winning uh, uh, a winning organization is that you, you create the, the, the right culture. And that's something that we truly believed in when we played and, and what we had on good teams. And that means, uh, like Dan talked about before, you, uh, it, and it starts with your top players. You come in in, in, the, in the best shape you can. Uh, you train the right the, the right way. Uh, you do the right things in in, in practice, uh, uh, and you lead the way on the ice when they, when it comes to games. And, and from from there, it's gonna it's gonna trickle down. And, and uh, the the, new, the young guys to come into the team, they're gonna see that, and they're gonna they're gonna start to doing the right things right away. So, I think most of that that's something that we truly believe in. And then we can, you can talk about players players here and there, and who, who to bring in, but. Uh, we want to try to 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 help the, the young guys here in the core group take the next step and, and uh, become even better. So that's that's what, what what we're excited for. Daniel, do you think Henrik talked about what he believes the team needs, and I'm sure you've said the same thing? Are those elements on the team right now? Are, do you think those players are there, or do you need to add more? I think it's always always tough uh, from the outside. Uh, you, you that's what we're excited to come in. Uh, Want to be a part of this, and, and uh, uh, we can only go back to what we had on on our teams that were successful, and that's uh, that's what we we've been talking about today. I think uh, the core group here is uh, is fantastic, uh, so much skill, fun to watch. Uh, I think with any any young core group, they need to take steps every year, like we like we needed to when we were young. So uh, that's uh, that's kind of the the only way your team will get better is if they take those steps and. Uh, uh, Never be satisfied. I think that's the that's the main thing uh, for us when we when we play it. We always want to take steps every year, and, and uh, if they can do that, I think this will be a, a, an exciting uh, group to to be a part of. Next is Jeff Patterson with the Athletic. Hey guys, congratulations and welcome back. Thank you. Uh, you've talked already this morning about trying to learn all the areas of uh, hockey management. The press release yesterday had a line in there that said you would work with the coaching staff in Abbotsford at the AHL level as well. Is there an on ice component to any of this or is this strictly managerial? We won't put our skates on. <laughs> Haven't skated for three years. <laughs> well, that won't happen. But uh, I think we're excited to work with uh, with Abbotsford as well. Uh, 
Ryan Johnson the other and then the coaching staff I think uh, we'll try to be there as well uh, watch practice I think practice is a big part of, of uh, becoming a successful player and, and a team I think practice habits uh, all those kind of things uh, that's going to transfer into becoming a good player in the end and uh, if you can be there and, and watch and and, uh, and talk to those guys too I think uh, we'll be happy to do that uh, so we'll, we'll we'll be We'll be doing a lot of different things, but like I said, in the end, it comes back to, to us wanting to learn learn uh, every aspect of this uh, this business. And my follow-up is for Jim. Uh, Jim, Daniel just mentioned Ryan Johnson. I, mean, I think it's believed that Ryan is coming as the general manager of the Abbotsford team. What about the coaching staff? Is Trent Cull going to be the head coach in Abbotsford? Yeah, we're, uh, we're going to have an announcement on that here coming up here, but we're, Ryan's going to be the general manager in Abbotsford and uh, we're going to bring up our coaching staff in Utica will be joining us in, in Abbotsford too. Next up, we'll go to Daniel Wagner. Vancouver is awesome. Uh, <clears throat> Henrik, I uh, just wanted to ask about kind of the negotiations when you were talking about uh, was there a back and forth in terms of what your role would be, how much responsibility you would take, and also in regards to job title, it's notably the same job title Luongo has with the Florida Panthers. Like, was that all part of the the discussion, and is that what took the most time? Yeah, we had some really good discussions back and forth, and and like I said, we we don't take this lightly. We didn't want to come in and and just come in because because of our names. Uh, and also, like like I said, we're, we're rookies. We 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 don't want to come in and, and take a role that we don't believe that we can, where we can help. So so uh, those are all part of the discussion. Uh, and and it, it took some time to 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 figure out exactly the the role. But it's we're we're happy with, with where we are right now. And for both of you, like you've talked about culture and and the teams that you were a part of that were successful. Um, when you were playing. Analytics were very friendly to you. Your, your underlying statistics, your puck possession statistics were always very good. Is that something you've stayed aware of? And is how do analytics play a role in how you might become a decision maker at the managerial level? I think analytics is very important. Uh, uh, but but in the end, like we 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 never really cared about goals or or how many points we produce but what was what was most important for us when we played was that we won our matchup like that, that was always the, the key for us stepping on the ice like you you, you go on the ice and whoever you face you, you're facing in the game you try to win the matchup and that means you you got at least be even in games uh, or or if you if you have a good game you're gonna you're gonna be on the on the plus side on the plus plus minus so for us even though plus minus is a is a it's not a stat that everyone loves, loves, but but in the end, if if you if you as a team can be good in that department, uh, you're gonna win a lot of games. And and like I said, goals points are good, but if you don't win your matchup, it it doesn't really matter how many points you put up. So uh, and that's that's that has nothing to do with system or or uh, uh, it's it's more about your individual play and and staying away from turnovers. Uh, have a good stick stick in the defensive end. Uh, all those little things. That's that's what matters. So analytics is good, but uh, there's other other parts too where there, where you, I think you can you can do that to be successful as a team. Next is John Jang, nine eighty CKNW. Hi guys, congratulations to you both. Good to see you back. Uh, Henrik, it wasn't that long ago, of course, you were being coached by Travis, you were teammates with a lot of those guys on that team. What's the level of communication between you and some of the players and staff on that team still as you uh, enter this new position? Well, we, we, we stepped away and, and because of COVID, we haven't been around that much. Uh, the first year, we we tried to come down as as, as often as we, as we could just to sit down and, and have a coffee and, and chat with the, with the players there and uh, and coaches, and we we have we met uh, with the coaches uh, uh, here and there to discuss things uh, and be uh, uh, a sounding board and and, uh, and those kinds of things. But the last year and a half, there there hasn't been as much as, as before. And 
Just to follow up on an earlier question, I believe it was from Ian, um, you know, the fact that you guys have spent the last couple of years retired with family, with kids at home, would you have still accepted a similar opportunity if the Canucks minor league affiliate was still in Utica as opposed to somewhere closer to home like it is in Abbotsford? Well, I think it's great that, that it's in Abbotsford. I think it's it's close. Uh, it's uh, easy for for us and, and uh, management and coaches to go down and watch those players. Uh, so... Uh, that's I think it's it's a perfect solution uh, in that in those regards um, for us to to be able to drive down and uh, and watch those guys practice and play games uh, it's going to be good for us uh, but coming back to that like we we came back because we care about this team and we we wouldn't come back if we weren't able to to put a hundred percent into this job so that's uh, that's been kind of our mindset uh, these last. Uh, years that we that we've been retired we we want to come back and and be able to to put time into this to this job we we don't take it lightly that's for sure next is chris faber canucks army hey guys uh my question is actually for jim uh, jim we've heard from daniel and henrik both talking about wanting to do a lot of learning here and in this new role but I'm curious, like, you must be excited to have these guys in the organization. What are some of the things that you're excited about year one that they can bring to the Canucks? Well, like, you know, even the conversations we've had already about, like, from a team building standpoint to get their ideas, their perspectives on, you know, what what they think we need, you know, to, to take the next step, I think it's been very important, um, you know, and, and, you know, it hasn't really been talked about yet, but the uh, the mentorship that, you know, knowing this market uh, with our young players, um, our young Swedish players to help mentor them to become the types of players that we believe that they can be, you know, I think it's it's going to be invaluable to, to have them work and, you know, with our young players and, you know, like they were great two-way players when they played and, you know, with our young players, you know, who score and stuff, sometimes like they talked about, it's learning the details uh, of the game to be better defensively. And I think, you know, when, when they talk to young players, you know, given, you know, the great careers that they had, you know, the, the young players are going to, you know, take what they say to heart. And I think that's how we're going to improve as a team. And a follow up here for, for Daniel and Henrik. It's been 10 years now since that 2011 run. Uh, you guys had an excellent core there. We're seeing a young core be built here in Vancouver. How confident are you in that young core that they can get to the level that you guys were at in 2011 and make a push for the Stanley Cup? Yeah, and I mean, it seems to forget too that that core group was together for a long time. Uh, I think we built uh, for quite a few years there where we got better each and every each and every day, uh, each and every year. Uh, we. Uh, we pushed each other to be better. We uh, we trusted each other uh, on the ice, uh, in the locker room. Uh, I think uh, there was that trust between players that uh, each and every each and every guy was going to do their job, and and uh, that's what you want your this core group to get to too. Uh, that's why we're excited to come in and see see for for ourselves uh, uh, what this uh, group is all about. So. Uh, it can take uh, a few years to get to that point. And uh, uh, it's all about uh, getting better each and every day. We'll go next to Rob Williams, Daily Hive. Oh, yeah, a question for Henrik. Uh, you guys have said that you are you know, eager to learn. What, what do you think the biggest challenge will be coming into this new role? Well, it's a lot of challenges, but I, I think we we're excited to to learn to to work with the hockey hockey side and 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 with the players and coaches and and, uh, and be a part of building a team. I think the the business side and the the how things are 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 run to make trades or before the draft and working with the scouts and how amateur scouting is working working and, and pro scouting and sit down with those guys. It's just. Uh, that, that is the, the part of the business where we we have never been around. So so that's going to be uh, the toughest and, and also maybe the, the most exciting part. And a follow up for Daniel, um, you know, hockey is always evolving. Uh, do you, what do you think the, the, how do you think team building has changed, say from 10 years ago from the great teams that, that you guys were on uh, to today? 
Hawk, Hawk is changing for sure. I think yeah, players are getting better. They're getting stronger. Uh, I think keep coming back to to the, the culture. I think uh, you can have as good a team as you want if if uh, if you don't have the right uh, culture and the and the great the, the right mindset uh, in the locker room, you'll never be successful. Uh, I think yeah, that's the number one thing. Uh, like I said, hockey is so much better now than it was when we came into the league. Uh, so. That's changing for sure. I think you see uh, it's a faster game. It's a, it's a more skilled game. So we we would not have a chance in this league at the moment. But uh, like I said, the culture has to be has to be right. We'll take a couple return questions now. We'll go first to Ben Kuzma, Post Media. Yeah, one for Jim here. Um, Daniel said that, uh, you know, they're rookies. As players, you know, Jim, Rookies are usually seen but not heard, but this is obviously a different situation with uh, Hank and Danny. H how much are you going to embrace what they have to say in maybe areas that they don't have the expertise in yet when it comes to things about the draft or free agency? Because they were always very adept at understanding what was happening in the league, even when they were players, Jim. You talked to them about players around the league. They seem to know about issues in the league. They seem to know about how elite players were functioning and who was really on the up and up. How open-minded are you going to be, Jim, to listen to them on every conceivable level? Well, I'm going to be real open-minded. And even, you know, the conversations that we've had so far, like they're humble guys, but they're, you know, they followed the league the last couple of years. They followed the team. Um, you know, they're excited about the young pieces that we have in place, the young core group. And, and now it's about trying to get this young core group to the next step. And, you know, they, they want to be part of that. And so um, I'm very excited that, you know, they joined us today and, you know, they're not that far removed from the league. So they still, you know, know a lot of the players in the league. They know what winning teams look like. So, um, you know, I'm going to be listening to them and they're going to be a big part of our decision-making process moving forward. Thank you. We have two more questions here. We'll go first to Thomas Drance, The Athletic. I'll pose this one to Henrik if I could. Uh, you've both talked a lot about teams you've played on in the past and how long a run you had together building as a core group. Um, in 2008 and 2009, the club had both of you and then also Luongo and Kessler expire, and they, you all negotiated extensions in which you became more expensive against the cap. Now you're coming back to the management side for a club facing a pretty similar challenge with Petey and Hughes and then Brock and then Bo. Do you see analogies between where this club was at in, say, 2007 and where the team's at now? Uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, like when you talk about contracts it's, and successful teams and, and salaries in this era, I think it's, uh, it's, it's very easy to – well, easy. It's, it's – fairly easy to build a good team and that's if if every player can outplay their own contract so that's that's the that's an easy way of, of uh becoming a good team and building one so uh i think you we you want to have players that, that want to play here and and be successful here in vancouver and that's that's the only way you can you can be successful and, and we had some great pieces back then and they, there are some great pieces here now so uh there, there's some sim similarities for sure Okay, we'll take our last question now from Jay Janower, Global BC. Jim, a couple of questions for you, two-parter. First off, we're, we're less than a month now until the NHL expansion draft. I'm just curious, uh, are you grinding any over any decisions as to who to protect and, and you know, the amount of forwards and defensemen and what that's going to look like? We're, what's your thought process heading into the expansion draft? Yeah, well, we're talking to all of the all the teams in the league right now, and just trying to get a feel for you know what they're going to do or what it's going to look like for them in expansion. We we're not going to have, I don't think, any big issues with our protection list uh, for expansion, and you know, but we're trying to get to know the market, see you know what players are going to be available, and if we can try to maybe add a player or two before expansion, we're going to look to do that. And last question, Jim, can you bring us an update on the status of Jake Bertan and, and the investigation where that's uh, leading, where it's heading? Yeah, there's no new news on that. Okay, 